prove it, it was important um, to have uh, facts accurately, especially because uh, the official narrative of this, uh, the standard narrative is a military story. Uh, it's a story of a military thing. And in Greg's script, uh, already there was a moment where Bose decides that his priority is not to kill the hostages, and he actually tells them, uh, he tells Jacques Lemoyne, uh, who is here, uh, to lay down. And he points his weapon, so he decided not to make killing the hostages his priority. Now, this is not in the official narrative. So I had to check this out, and, it, and it's true. Uh, and then, regarding the importance of this, when you look at Rabin in Paris, and you see the dynamic, you realize how difficult it is for a politician in Israel to negotiate. Uh, so let me put it in a succinct way. For an Israeli soldier to be brave is to do what Yoni did. Get on a plane, risk your life to save your country. For an Israeli politician to be brave is to do what Rabin did. Be able and have the courage to sit on a table to negotiate. And Rabin was actually killed on the context of trying to do this in, uh, in Oslo. So uh, what you learn, what's important is you learn that even though we're being taught the operation was doubtful, he had to approve it because not approving it would be a political problem for him. Now, this is true of the dynamic of Israel and Palestine today. It's very difficult for a Palestinian or for an Israeli politician to, to negotiate because they lose political standing in their countries. Like another example, Ehud Barak made a proposal to, uh, to uh, Yasser Arafat in Camp David, and Yasser Arafat said no, even though the proposal was regarded as being a good proposal, but Arafat couldn't take it because it would hurt him politically. So what's the message here? Uh, in this recurrent conflict, it's very easy for politicians to present themselves as, I'm going to defend you against the enemy. And once you frame the relationship as a relationship like that to enemies, it becomes hard to negotiate. Uh, that's still true today. It was most of the other movies are told from the military perspective, and they, told, uh, they show you a history of heroism, of a gigantic military feat, uh, and they kind of ignored the interaction between the hostages and the hijackers, and also the political aspects in Israel. So that's on itself a reason to make the movie. As for the Bacheva dance, uh, in my first reply, the gentleman here, I said that there is a, a constant state of fear in both Israelis and Palestinian populations because of the conflict, and this fear is preyed upon by right-wing politicians and radical politicians who present themselves as, vote for me and I'll defend you from the enemy. Uh, kind of like Trump, who's going to build a wall to defend America from whomever, I don't know. Uh, so that kind of thing is common, right, uh, in politics. Uh, I thought that I could use the dance to make a comment on that. So what is the dance? You see the dancers uh, dressed in uh, orthodox clothes. They step on stage, and as they dance, they make movements that suggest self-inflicting pain. Uh, and as the dance progresses, they strip themselves of their clothes, meaning they strip themselves of their orthodoxy, uh, and somehow get free of the very political constraints that go against uh, negotiations. One dancer doesn't do that. This dancer keeps being falling from the chair, falling from the chair as if he's being shot. So it's a cinematic visual way of trying to convey an idea uh, that's implicit in the movie itself. 